My Catholic Faith, Lesson 59 The Roman Courier What is the Roman Courier? The Roman Courier is the core of the government of the Church. The Holy Father possesses complete and absolute power over the government of the Church. But it is not possible for him to exercise his authority personally and directly over every detail in the worldwide Church. A great deal of the jurisdiction has been delegated to the Roman Curia, which at present consists of 12 sacred congregations, 3 tribunals, 5 offices. In general terms, the congregations exercise administrative and executive power, the tribunals, judicial power, and the offices, ministerial duties. Almost all the heads of these bodies in the Roman Curia are cardinals, because of the importance of the congregations of the Holy Office, consistorial and oriental church, the Holy Father himself is the prefect or head. The Twelve Sacred Congregations Number 1. The Supreme Sacred Congregation of the Holy Office guards Catholic doctrine in faith and morals, handles matters concerning the Pauline privilege, the marriage impediments of disparity of cult and mixed religion, and may grant dispensations of these impediments, examines and condemns books and publications dangerous to faith and morals, and gives permission for reading them, is concerned over dogmatic doctrine of indulgences, new prayers and devotions. In criminal cases, it has jurisdiction especially over delicts against faith, such as apostasy, heresy, schism, profanation of the Eucharist, Unlike other congregations, it has judicial as well as administrative powers. Metals are handled under the seal of the strictest secrecy. Number 2. The Sacred Congregation of the Consistorial prepares the agenda for discussion at the Papal Consistories, where the College of Cardinals with the Pope deliberate on important matters. Through this congregation, the Pope nominates bishops and other high officials after inquiring into their qualifications. It forms new dioceses and ecclesiastical provinces, which are not under the congregations to propaganda and oriental church, watches over the fulfilments of obligations binding diocesan ordinaries, examinations of quinquennial reports, and of apostolic visitations. Number 3. The Sacred Congregation for the Oriental Church exercises over the diocese, bishops, the clergy, religious, and the faithful of the Oriental rites all the powers which the congregations of the consistorial council, religious, and seminaries do over those of the Western Rite. 4. The Sacred Congregation of Sacramental Discipline looks after the external regulations of the sacraments and celebration of the Eucharistic issuing decrees and granting dispensations, has exclusive competence over legitima legitimation of birth, judges over the obli obligation of holy orders and validity of sacred orders and matrimony. 5. The Sacred Congregation of the Council supervises the discipline of the clergy and faithful, regulates catechetical, catechetical instruction and observance of Christian obligations, cathedral chapters and parishes, Catholic action, confraternities and pious associations, reviews the acts of councils and episcopal conferences, and looks after the administration of ecclesiastical property. 6. The Sacred Congregation of Religious has authority over every aspect of religious life related to religious orders and congregations, religious groups living in common, third orders and secular institutes, their obligations, rights and privileges, dispensations, property, etc., etc. In some particular matters, religious are also under other sacred congregations as for studies under the Sacred Congregation of Seminaries and Universities. 7. The Sacred Congregation de Propaganda Fide in mission territories, has jurisdiction over dioceses, vicariates, apostolic prefectures, the bishops and clergy, religious as missionaries, seminaries, even those out of mission territories, colleges, schools and educational institutions, administration of property with the exception of matters concerning jurisdiction of the sacred congregation of the Holy Office, rites and oriental church. The Pontifical Societies for the Propagation of the Faith, Holy Infancy, St. Peter the Apostles and the Pious Union of the Clergy are under the direction of this congregation. 8. The Sacred Congregation of Rites has competence over all rites and ceremonies of the Western Church insofar as they refer to the sacrifice of the Mass, administration of the sacraments, to divine worship in general. 
It also handles the causes of beatification and canonization of saints and everything appertaining to sacred relics. 9. The Sacred Congregation of Ceremonials supervises the liturgical and non-liturgical ceremonies of the Roman Curia. It is in charge of the ceremonies in the chapel and palace of the Sovereign Pontiff, and of those carried out by cardinals. It settles questions of precedence among cardinals, prelatures, and diplomatic representatives. 10. The Sacred Congregation for Extraordinary Ecclesiastical Affairs has the task to erect and divide dioceses and appoint bishops in those cases in which it is necessary to deal with civil governments, as also to discuss matters which the Sovereign Pontiff may turn over to the Cardinal Secretary of State, especially those dealing with civil laws, concordats, or other agreements entered into between the Holy See and different countries. 11. The Sacred Congregation of Seminaries and Universities supervises, with the exception of those under the Congregations of the Propaganda and Oriental Church, all seminaries, Catholic universities or faculties, and over all educational institutions dependent on ecclesiastical authority. It also directs the pontifical work for priestly vocations. 12. The Sacred Congregation of the Basilica of St. Peter looks after the administration of the assets of the Basilica and of its upkeep. The Three Tribunals of the Curia 1. The Sacred Apostolic Penitentiary judges all cases involving conscience, whether sacramental or not, grants faculties, dispensations and absolutions, and decides all cases concerning the granting and use of indulgences outside of the rites of the Holy Office on the subject of dogmatic doctrine. 2. The Supreme Tribunal of the Apostolic Signature is the Supreme Court of the Roman Curia. It has charge of all appeals and settles all cases regarding jurisdiction of inferior tribunals, in a particular manner cases in connection with the sacred Roman rota. 3. The sacred Roman rota is a tribunal of appeal for all ecclesiastical cases where the Roman curia is competent and which are not reserved to other jurisdictions. It is also the Tribunal of Appeal for the State of the Vatican City, as well as Tribunal of First Instance in cases which are reserved to the Holy See. It is well known by the decisions in marriage cases. It is well known by its decisions in marriage cases. Attached to this tribunal is the Rota, Studium, Study, intended for the training of future advocates, judges, promoters and defenders of the bond in ecclesiastical courts. The Five Offices of the Roman Curia The Apostolic Chancery draws up and dispatches the decretal letters of canonization and the pontifical bulls dealing with appointments, erection of new dioceses and other affairs of major importance on instructions from the congregations or by personal order of the Pope. The Apostolic Datary takes care of the appointments of candidates to non-consistorial benefices reserved to the Holy See and their due taxation. The Apostolic Camera has charge under the presidency of the Cardinal Carmelingo of Holy Roman Church over all temporal goods and rights of the Holy See, especially when the See is vacant. It corresponds to the treasure of the Church. Its head, the Cameralingo, assumes the regency upon the death of the Pope and makes arrangements for the election. The Secretariat of State handles the affairs between the Holy See and civil powers and many others among them, the conferring of the various pontifical decorations. Today, the Secretariat of State is obviously the outstanding department of the Roman Curia. The Cardinal Secretary of State may be said to be the Prime Minister of the Pope. The Secretariat of Briefs to Princes and that of Latin Letters, although are two diff distinct offices, for practical purposes they work as one unit. They transcribe into Latin all acts of the Pope that he endorses to them. Permanent Pontifical Commissions for Biblical Studies, Promoting the Progress of Biblical Studies For the Authentic Interpretation of the Code of Canon Law For the Codification of Oriental Canon Law Abbey of St. Jerome for the Revision and Emendation of the Vulgate Of Historical Sciences For the Ecclesiastical Archives of Italy Of Sacred Archaeology For Sacred Art in Italy for motion pictures, radio and television, affiliated to the Secretariat of State of His Holiness. For Latin America, to study the fundamental problems of Catholic life in Latin America in a unified manner, favouring close collaboration with the congregations of the Roman Curia and the Latin American Episcopal Council and its Secretariat General. 
for the sanctuary of Pompeii, for the preservation of the faith and for the erection of new churches in Rome, for the protection of the historical and artistic monuments of the Holy See. Heraldic Commission for the Pontifical Court, Pontifical Relief Organisation. The Papal Elections. When the Dean of the College of Cardinals publicly announces the death of the Pope, all Cardinals throughout the world are convoked to a solemn conclave for the election of a new Supreme Pontiff. The conclave is held within 15 to 18 days after the death of the Holy Father. If all the Cardinals are present on the 15th day after the death of the Pope, then the conclave begins. If not, all the cardinals are present. If not all the cardinals are present, the conclave is postponed until the 18th day. Then the cardinals, after celebrating Holy Mass, gather in the Sistine Chapel for the elections, and until they have made a choice, they remain in seclusion within a part of the Vatican reserved for them. Any male Catholic of whatever country or race, even a layman, may be elected Pope. Should a layman be chosen, he would have to be ordained priest and consecrated bishop before he may assume the duties of his office. To be validly the Supreme Pontiff, the elected one is required to accept the office. The Pope is elected for life, however, if he wishes, he may resign and a new Pope would then be elected. The voting by the Cardinals is done on specially printed ballots. A two-thirds majority plus one is required to elect. Two ballots are taken every morning and evening until a selection is made. As long as no choice is made, the ballots are burned with damp straw. The heavy black smoke coming out from the chimney is assigned to the public, usually assembled in the plaza outside, that no decision has been reached. But when a candidate receives a two-thirds majority plus one, then he is elected, and the ballots are burned without the damp straw. Light smoke issuing from the chimney notifies the eager public that they have a new Holy Father. <laughs>